Welcome, dear travelers, to Storytime Haven, where the pages of imagination unfurl like sails upon the winds of wonder. Here, amidst the soft glow of lamplight and the scent of well-loved books, we embark on a timeless journey through the enchanting realms of storytelling. Join us as we unlock the gates to magical worlds and embark on adventures beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 1. The Mysterious Gift In a cozy little house nestled at the end of a quiet street, there lived a curious young boy named Oliver. Oliver was an imaginative child who loved nothing more than exploring the wonders of the world around him. He spent his days reading books about far-off lands, dreaming of adventures yet to come. One crisp autumn morning, as the leaves danced in the wind outside his window, Oliver's parents surprised him with a special gift. It was a teddy bear unlike any he had ever seen before. Its fur was a soft shade of caramel, and its eyes sparkled with a hint of magic. Attached to its paw was a small, golden tag that read, To Oliver, with love. Excitedly, Oliver hugged the teddy bear close, feeling a warmth radiate from its plush body. He named the bear Teddy and promised to cherish it always. As night fell and the stars began to twinkle in the sky, Oliver nestled into bed, Teddy tucked safely by his side. Just as he was about to drift off to sleep, he noticed something peculiar. The room seemed to be bathed in a soft, golden light. And the ticking of the old grandfather clock in the corner grew louder with each passing moment. Suddenly, Oliver felt a strange sensation wash over him, as if he were being pulled into a whirlwind of time itself. Before he could comprehend what was happening, he found himself standing in a bustling marketplace, surrounded by people dressed in clothing from a bygone era. Wide-eyed and bewildered, Oliver looked around frantically, searching for Teddy. To his astonishment, there was the teddy bear, standing on its hind legs and waving frantically in his direction. Teddy, what's happening? Oliver exclaimed, his voice trembling with fear. But Teddy simply smiled and beckoned for Oliver to follow. With a mixture of trepidation and excitement, Oliver took Teddy's paw, and together they embarked on the adventure of a lifetime. Chapter 2 The Discovery of the Time-Traveling Teddy Bear As Oliver and Teddy ventured through the bustling marketplace, they attracted curious glances from the locals, who marveled at the sight of a boy and his teddy bear seemingly appearing out of thin air. Despite the initial shock of their surroundings, Oliver couldn't help but feel a surge of exhilaration coursing through his veins. He was on an adventure unlike anything he had ever imagined. As they wandered through the cobblestone streets, Teddy led Oliver to a quaint little shop tucked away in a corner of the marketplace. The sign above the door read, Magical Oddities and Curiosities. Intrigued, Oliver pushed open the creaky door and stepped inside, Teddy by his side. The shop was filled with an eclectic array of artifacts, from ancient tomes to peculiar trinkets that seemed to shimmer with otherworldly energy. A kindly old man with a twinkle in his eye emerged from behind a dusty counter, his wrinkled face breaking into a warm smile at the sight of Oliver and Teddy. Welcome, young traveler. The old man greeted them. What brings you to my humble establishment? Oliver hesitated, unsure of how to explain the inexplicable events that had led him to this mysterious shop. But before he could utter a word, Teddy stepped forward, his button eyes gleaming with determination. We're here because we seek answers. Teddy declared in a surprisingly resolute voice. The old man's eyes widened in surprise, and he nodded knowingly. Ah, I see, he murmured, stroking his beard thoughtfully. You have stumbled upon something truly remarkable, young one. That teddy bear of yours is no ordinary toy. It possesses the power to traverse the fabric of time itself. Oliver gasped in astonishment his mind reeling with the implications of what the old man had just revealed. But how is that possible? Oliver asked, his voice barely above a whisper. The old man chuckled softly, a twinkle of mischief dancing in his eyes. Some mysteries are best left unsolved, my dear boy, he replied cryptically. But if you are brave enough to embrace the unknown, the adventures that await you will be beyond your wildest imagination. With a wave of his hand, the old man produced a small, intricately carved box from the depths of his cloak and handed it to Oliver. Take this, he said, his voice tinged with a hint of solemnity. It is a gift to aid you on your journey. May it guide you safely through the currents of time. Oliver accepted the box with trembling hands, 
his heart pounding with excitement and apprehension. Little did he know that this humble trinket would hold the key to unlocking the mysteries of the universe and the incredible adventures that lay ahead. With Teddy by his side, Oliver was ready to embark on a journey that would change his life forever. Chapter 3, Teddy's First Adventure, Victorian London After receiving the mysterious gift from the old man in the magical shop, Oliver and Teddy found themselves standing on a bustling street corner in the heart of Victorian London. The air was thick with the scent of coal smoke, and the sound of carriage wheels clattering against cobblestones filled the air. Tall buildings loomed overhead, their facades adorned with ornate carvings and elaborate architecture. As Oliver gazed around in wonder, he couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the sights and sounds of this bustling metropolis. But his excitement quickly turned to concern as he realized that they were completely unfamiliar with their surroundings. Teddy, where are we? Oliver asked, his voice tinged with uncertainty. Teddy glanced around, his button eyes gleaming with determination. We're in Victorian London, he replied matter-of-factly. It's a fascinating time and place, full of adventure and intrigue. With Teddy leading the way, Oliver followed as they navigated the crowded streets, dodging pedestrians and horse-drawn carriages along the way. They passed by shops selling everything from handmade crafts to exotic spices, and Oliver couldn't help but marvel at the sights and sounds of this vibrant city. But their journey was soon interrupted by a commotion up ahead. A crowd had gathered around a street performer, who was putting on a mesmerizing display of magic tricks and illusions. Intrigued, Oliver and Teddy joined the throng of spectators, their eyes wide with wonder as they watched the magician's sleight of hand and mesmerizing illusions. But as the performance reached its climax, disaster struck. With a flourish of his cloak, the magician accidentally knocked over a nearby lamppost, sending it crashing to the ground with a deafening clang. The crowd scattered in panic, and chaos ensued as people scrambled to get out of harm's way. Thinking quickly, Oliver grabbed Teddy's paw and pulled him to safety, narrowly avoiding being crushed by the falling lamppost. As they caught their breath, Oliver couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude towards Teddy for keeping him safe. Thank you, Teddy, Oliver said, his voice filled with relief. Teddy smiled warmly, his eyes twinkling with mischief. No need to thank me, Oliver, he replied. After all, what are friends for? With that, Oliver and Teddy continued on their journey through the bustling streets of Victorian London, their hearts filled with excitement and anticipation for the adventures that lay ahead. Little did they know that their next destination would take them even further back in time, to a world filled with danger and intrigue beyond their wildest dreams. Chapter 4. A Narrow Escape from Dinosaurs As Oliver and Teddy ventured forth from the bustling streets of Victorian London, they found themselves enveloped by an eerie mist that seemed to swirl around them like ghostly tendrils. Before they could react, the mist thickened, obscuring their surroundings and casting an otherworldly glow upon the landscape. Suddenly, the ground beneath their feet began to tremble, and a deep, rumbling roar echoed through the air. Oliver's heart raced as he realized with a sinking feeling that they were no longer in Victorian London, or any familiar place for that matter. Teddy... Where are we? Oliver asked, his voice trembling with fear. Teddy's button eyes darted around anxiously as he tried to make sense of their surroundings. It appears we've traveled back in time to the age of the dinosaurs, Teddy replied, his voice barely above a whisper. As the mist began to dissipate, Oliver's eyes widened in astonishment at the sight before him. Towering prehistoric trees stretched skyward, their branches swaying in the gentle breeze. Strange and exotic creatures darted through the underbrush, their calls echoing through the dense foliage. But before Oliver could fully comprehend their predicament, a shadow fell over them, and a deafening roar filled the air. With a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach, Oliver turned to see a massive Tyrannosaurus Rex looming over them, its razor-sharp teeth gleaming menacingly in the sunlight. Run, Oliver, run, Teddy cried, his voice filled with urgency. With adrenaline coursing through his veins, Oliver bolted forward, Teddy clutched tightly in his arms. They dodged fallen branches and leapt over gnarled roots as they raced through the primeval forest. The thunderous footsteps of the T, Rex hot on their heels. Just when it seemed they would be caught in the jaws of the fearsome predator, Oliver spotted a small cave nestled amidst the tangled undergrowth. 
With one final burst of speed, they darted inside, narrowly avoiding becoming a prehistoric snack. Breathless and trembling, Oliver collapsed to the ground, his heart pounding in his chest. Teddy lay beside him, his plush fur matted with sweat and dirt. We made it, Teddy, Oliver gasped, his voice tinged with relief. Teddy smiled weakly, his button eyes shining with pride. Yes, we did, Oliver, he replied, but our adventure is far from over. As they caught their breath and prepared to venture back out into the prehistoric wilderness, Oliver couldn't help but feel a sense of exhilaration at the thought of the incredible adventures that lay ahead. Little did he know that their journey through time was only just beginning, and that the greatest dangers and wonders still awaited them on the horizon. Chapter 5 Meeting Famous Historical Figures After narrowly escaping the clutches of the Tyrannosaurus Rex in the prehistoric wilderness, Oliver and Teddy found themselves once again enveloped in the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex. As the mist cleared, they emerged in a bustling city square, surrounded by the sights and sounds of a bygone era. Oliver's eyes widened in wonder as he took in the grandeur of their new surroundings. Tall stone buildings lined the cobblestone streets, their facades adorned with intricate carvings and ornate decorations. The air was filled with the sound of horse-drawn carriages clattering along the cobbled roads and the chatter of bustling crowds. Where are we now, Teddy? Oliver asked, his voice filled with awe. Teddy glanced around, his button eyes gleaming with excitement. We've traveled to Renaissance Italy, Teddy replied. A time of great art, culture, and innovation. With Teddy leading the way, Oliver eagerly explored the bustling streets of Renaissance Italy, marveling at the magnificent architecture and vibrant energy of the city. Everywhere they turned, they encountered famous historical figures, artists, scholars, and inventors whose names would echo through the annals of history. As they wandered through the bustling marketplace, they stumbled upon a crowd gathered around a makeshift stage where a group of actors was putting on a lively performance of one of William Shakespeare's plays. Oliver watched in awe as the actors brought the timeless tale to life, their voices ringing out with passion and emotion. But their encounter with famous historical figures didn't end there. As they continued their journey through the city, they crossed paths with Leonardo da Vinci, who was busy sketching designs for his latest invention, and Michelangelo, who was hard at work sculpting a marble masterpiece. Each encounter left Oliver feeling more inspired and awestruck than the last, as he realized the profound impact these remarkable individuals had on the course of history. With each passing moment, he grew more determined to make the most of their time-traveling adventure and embrace the wonders of the world around him. As the sun began to set over the bustling city, casting a warm golden glow upon the cobblestone streets, Oliver and Teddy knew that their journey through time was far from over. With the promise of new adventures and discoveries awaiting them at every turn, they set off into the unknown, eager to see what wonders the future, or the past, had in store. Chapter 6 Teddy's Time-Traveling Mishaps As Oliver and Teddy continued their journey through the corridors of time, they found themselves swept up in a series of misadventures that tested their courage and resilience like never before. Their next destination took them to the heart of ancient Egypt, where they marveled at the grandeur of the pyramids and the majesty of the Nile River. But their awe quickly turned to alarm when Teddy accidentally knocked over a priceless artifact in a bustling market, sending it crashing to the ground with a resounding thud. With a chorus of angry shouts ringing in their ears, Oliver and Teddy fled the scene, narrowly escaping the wrath of the local merchants. As they darted through the winding streets of the ancient city, Oliver couldn't help but feel a pang of guilt at the trouble they had caused. Their next stop was feudal Japan, where they found themselves caught in the midst of a fierce samurai battle. With swords clashing and arrows flying through the air, Oliver and Teddy scrambled for cover, desperately trying to avoid getting caught in the crossfire. But their luck soon ran out when Teddy accidentally tripped over a discarded suit of armor, sending it crashing to the ground with a deafening clang. With a chorus of angry shouts, the samurai turned their attention towards Oliver and Teddy, their swords raised menacingly. With a quick flick of his wrist, Teddy produced a small pouch of gold coins from his pocket and tossed them towards the samurai, distracting them long enough for Oliver and Teddy to make their escape. As they fled the battlefield, Oliver couldn't help but feel a sense of relief at their narrow escape. 
but their misadventures were far from over. In medieval Europe, they found themselves mistaken for witches and thrown into a dank dungeon, where they narrowly avoided being burned at the stake. In the Wild West, they inadvertently stumbled upon a bank robbery and found themselves caught in the middle of a shootout. Through it all, Oliver and Teddy stuck together, relying on their quick wits and resourcefulness to navigate the dangers of the past. And as they emerged from each mishap unscathed, their bond grew stronger, forging a friendship that would withstand the test of time. As they journeyed onward through the corridors of time, Oliver and Teddy knew that their adventures were far from over. With each new destination came new challenges and new discoveries, and they were determined to face them head on, together. Chapter 7, A Visit to Ancient Egypt Emerging from the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex, Oliver and Teddy found themselves amidst the golden sands and towering monuments of ancient Egypt. The sun beat down relentlessly, casting long shadows across the vast desert landscape. Oliver shielded his eyes against the glare, marveling at the grandeur of the pyramids that loomed in the distance like colossal sentinels guarding the secrets of the past. Wow, Teddy, look at this place, Oliver exclaimed. His voice filled with wonder. Teddy nodded in agreement, his button eyes gleaming with excitement. Yes, Oliver, we've traveled back thousands of years to one of the most fascinating civilizations in history, Teddy replied. With Teddy leading the way, Oliver eagerly set off to explore the wonders of ancient Egypt. They wandered through bustling marketplaces, where merchants hawked exotic spices and precious jewels. They marveled at the towering obelisks and elaborately carved temples that dotted the landscape, marveling at the skill and ingenuity of the ancient architects and craftsmen. But their journey took an unexpected turn when they stumbled upon a group of workers toiling under the scorching sun, laboring to construct one of the great pyramids. Oliver watched in astonishment as massive stone blocks were hauled into place, each one carefully fitted into position with remarkable precision. The air was filled with the sound of grunting laborers and the crack of whips as overseers urged them on. As they approached the construction site, Oliver couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for the weary workers, their faces etched with exhaustion and sweat dripping from their brows. We have to do something to help them, Teddy, Oliver said, his voice filled with determination. Teddy nodded in agreement, his button eyes shining with compassion. Agreed, Oliver. Let's lend a hand. Teddy replied. With that, Oliver and Teddy joined the workers, rolling up their sleeves and pitching in to haul heavy stones and dig trenches. Despite their small size, they worked tirelessly alongside the other laborers, their determination unwavering. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the workday came to an end, the workers gathered around a crackling campfire, their faces lit by the warm glow of the flames. Oliver and Teddy shared stories and laughter with their new friends their hearts filled with a sense of camaraderie and kinship. As they bid farewell to the workers and continued on their journey through ancient Egypt, Oliver couldn't help but feel a sense of pride at the difference they had made, no matter how small. And as they ventured onward, he knew that their adventures were far from over, with countless wonders and discoveries still awaiting them in the sands of time. Chapter 8, Teddy's Encounter with Pirates as Oliver and Teddy emerged from the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex, they found themselves on the deck of a weather-beaten pirate ship, the salty sea air filling their lungs, and the creaking of the ship's timbers echoing in their ears. The sky above was a brilliant shade of azure blue, dotted with fluffy white clouds that drifted lazily on the breeze. Oliver's eyes widened in astonishment as he took in the sight before him. The ship's sails billowed in the wind, its masts towering high above the deck. A motley crew of rough-looking pirates scurried about, their voices raised in a cacophony of shouts and laughter. Ah, matey, welcome aboard the Black Pearl. A grizzled old pirate bellowed, his voice booming with authority. Oliver glanced nervously at Teddy, who stood beside him with a mischievous twinkle in his button eyes. It seems we've stumbled upon a pirate adventure, Oliver, Teddy said a hint of excitement in his voice. With Teddy leading the way, Oliver cautiously explored the deck of the pirate ship, taking care to avoid the watchful gaze of the crew. Everywhere he looked, he saw barrels of rum, coils of rope, and gleaming cutlasses tucked into weathered leather belts. But their journey took a dangerous turn when they stumbled upon the ship's captain, a fearsome pirate with a scarred face and a hook for a hand. With a snarl, 
The captain drew his sword and advanced towards Oliver and Teddy, his eyes ablaze with fury. Ye scurvy dogs, what be ye doing aboard me ship? The captain growled, his voice dripping with menace. With a gulp, Oliver stepped forward, his heart pounding in his chest. We mean you no harm, Captain, Oliver said, his voice trembling slightly. We're just travelers passing through. The captain eyed Oliver and Teddy suspiciously, his grip tightening on the hilt of his sword. You'd best be watching your step, lad, the captain warned. This ear ship ain't no place for landlubbers like yourself. With that, the captain turned on his heel and stalked away, leaving Oliver and Teddy to ponder their next move. We need to find a way off this ship, Teddy, Oliver whispered, his voice tinged with urgency. Teddy nodded in agreement, his button eyes scanning the deck for any sign of escape. But before they could formulate a plan, the ship suddenly lurched beneath their feet, sending them sprawling to the ground. With a deafening roar, a rival pirate ship emerged from the fog, its cannons blazing with fury. As the two ships clashed in a fierce battle on the high seas, Oliver and Teddy knew that their only hope of survival lay in finding a way off the ship and back to safety. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, they prepared to make their daring escape, knowing that the greatest adventure of their lives was still yet to come. Chapter 9, Lost in the Middle Ages. As Oliver and Teddy emerged from the chaos of the pirate ship battle, they found themselves engulfed in a dense fog that obscured their surroundings. The air was thick with the scent of salt and seaweed, and the sound of crashing waves echoed in the distance. With a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach, Oliver realized that they had been swept away from the pirate ship and cast adrift on the open sea. Panic gripped his heart as he scanned the horizon for any sign of land, but all he could see was an endless expanse of mist and water. Teddy, what are we going to do? Oliver asked, his voice tinged with fear. Teddy placed a comforting paw on Oliver's shoulder his button eyes shining with determination. Don't worry, Oliver. We'll find a way to get back on track, Teddy reassured him. With Teddy's encouragement, Oliver took a deep breath and focused on the task at hand. They searched the horizon for any sign of land, hoping to find a clue that would lead them back to safety. After what felt like an eternity, they finally spotted a distant speck on the horizon, a rugged coastline jutting out from the swirling mist. With a surge of hope, Oliver and Teddy set a course for the mysterious landmass, their hearts pounding with anticipation. As they drew closer, the fog began to dissipate, revealing a sprawling medieval castle perched atop a rocky cliff. The castle's towering battlements loomed overhead, their stone walls weathered by centuries of wind and rain. Oliver's eyes widened in awe as he took in the sight before him. It was like something out of a fairy tale, a place where knights battled dragons and maidens awaited rescue in lofty towers. But their sense of wonder quickly turned to alarm when they realized that they had no idea how they had ended up in the Middle Ages or how to return to their own time. We're lost, Teddy, Oliver said, his voice trembling with uncertainty. Teddy nodded in agreement, his button eyes filled with concern. It seems we've taken a wrong turn somewhere along the way, Teddy replied. But we'll find a way to set things right, Oliver we always do. With Teddy by his side, Oliver set off to explore the medieval castle, hoping to find answers that would help them unravel the mystery of their unexpected journey through time. Little did they know that their adventure was far from over, and that the greatest challenges and discoveries still lay ahead in the labyrinthine corridors of the Middle Ages. Chapter 10. Teddy's Quest for a Way Home. As Oliver and Teddy explored the ancient medieval castle, they found themselves immersed in a world of mystery and intrigue, the corridors were dimly lit by flickering torches, their stone walls adorned with faded tapestries depicting scenes from a bygone era. With each step they took, they felt the weight of history pressing down upon them, filling them with a sense of wonder and trepidation. Their journey led them through winding passageways and hidden chambers, where they encountered all manner of obstacles and challenges. They dodged swinging pendulum traps, deciphered cryptic riddles, and outsmarted cunning traps set by the castle's ancient guardians. But their most daunting challenge came when they stumbled upon the castle's library, a vast repository of knowledge filled with dusty tomes and ancient scrolls. With Teddy's help, Oliver pored over the ancient texts, 
searching for clues that would help them unlock the secrets of their time-traveling adventure. As they delved deeper into the mysteries of the past, Oliver's determination grew stronger, fueled by the hope of finding a way back home. But with each passing moment, their quest seemed to grow more perilous, as they encountered ancient curses and dark forces that sought to keep them trapped in the depths of history. But through it all, Teddy remained steadfast by Oliver's side, his unwavering loyalty and courage guiding them through the darkest of times. Together, they faced every challenge head-on, refusing to give up hope even in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. As they continued their quest for a way home, Oliver and Teddy discovered a hidden chamber deep within the castle, a chamber filled with ancient artifacts and mystical relics. Among them was a small, ornately carved amulet that seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy. With a sense of trepidation, Oliver reached out and grasped the amulet in his hand, feeling a surge of power course through his veins. In that moment, he knew that the amulet held the key to their salvation, a way to unlock the secrets of the time-traveling vortex and find their way back home. With Teddy's encouragement, Oliver held the amulet aloft and uttered the ancient incantation inscribed upon its surface. With a blinding flash of light, the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex enveloped them once again, carrying them away from the medieval castle and back to the familiar comforts of their own time and place. As they emerged from the vortex, Oliver and Teddy found themselves standing in Oliver's bedroom, the soft glow of the moonlight casting shadows upon the walls. With a sigh of relief, Oliver collapsed onto his bed, his heart filled with gratitude for the incredible adventure they had shared. As he drifted off to sleep, he knew that he would never forget the lessons he had learned and the friendships he had forged along the way. And as long as he had Teddy by his side, he knew that there would always be more adventures waiting just beyond the horizon. Chapter 11, A Journey Through the Renaissance. After their harrowing adventure in the medieval castle, Oliver and Teddy found themselves once again standing on the threshold of the time-traveling vortex. With a sense of anticipation tinged with excitement, they stepped forward, ready to embark on their next journey through the corridors of time. As the swirling mist enveloped them, Oliver felt a sense of exhilaration coursing through his veins, knowing that they were about to embark on another incredible adventure. When the mist cleared, they found themselves standing in the midst of a bustling Renaissance city, a place of unparalleled beauty and creativity. Oliver's eyes widened in awe as he took in the sight before him. Magnificent palaces and grand cathedrals loomed overhead, their marble facades gleaming in the warm sunlight. Streets bustled with activity as merchants hawked their wares and artists displayed their masterpieces for all to see. Wow, Teddy, look at this place, Oliver exclaimed, his voice filled with wonder. Teddy nodded in agreement, his button eyes sparkling with excitement. It's the Renaissance. Oliver, a time of great art, culture, and innovation, Teddy replied. With Teddy leading the way, Oliver eagerly set off to explore the wonders of the Renaissance city. They wandered through bustling marketplaces, where merchants sold exotic spices and colorful fabrics from distant lands. They marveled at the intricate architecture and awe-inspiring sculptures that adorned every corner of the city a testament to the creativity and ingenuity of the Renaissance artisans. But their journey took an unexpected turn when they stumbled upon a group of painters gathered in a sunlit piazza, their easels set up beneath the shade of towering oak trees. Oliver watched in awe as the artists dipped their brushes into vibrant hues of paint, their strokes bringing to life scenes of breathtaking beauty and emotion. Inspired by the creativity of the Renaissance masters, Oliver picked up a brush and joined in the painting, his heart overflowing with joy and excitement. With each stroke of his brush, he felt a sense of connection to the world around him, as if he were tapping into a wellspring of inspiration that flowed through the very fabric of time itself. As the sun began to set over the Renaissance city, casting a warm golden glow upon the cobblestone streets, Oliver and Teddy knew that their journey through time was far from over. With the promise of new adventures and discoveries awaiting them at every turn, they set off into the unknown, eager to see what wonders the future, or the past, had in store. Chapter 12. Teddy's Brush with Danger in World War II As the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex enveloped them once again, Oliver and Teddy braced themselves for their next journey through the corridors of time. When the mist cleared, they found themselves standing in the midst of a war-torn landscape, 
a scene of devastation and chaos unlike anything they had ever seen before. Oliver's heart sank as he surveyed the scene before him. Buildings lay in ruins, their charred remains smoldering amidst the rubble. The air was thick with the acrid stench of smoke and the distant sound of gunfire echoed through the streets. Where are we, Teddy? Oliver asked, his voice trembling with fear. Teddy glanced around, his button eyes filled with concern. It appears we've traveled to the midst of World War II, Oliver, a time of great conflict and suffering. Teddy replied solemnly, determined to make sense of their surroundings and find a way back home. Oliver and Teddy set off through the war-torn streets, their hearts heavy with sadness at the sight of so much destruction and despair. But their journey took a dangerous turn when they stumbled upon a group of soldiers engaged in a fierce firefight with enemy forces. Bullets whizzed past them, sending shards of debris flying through the air. With a sense of urgency, Oliver and Teddy darted for cover, their hearts pounding in their chests as they narrowly avoided being caught in the crossfire. We have to find a way out of here, Teddy, Oliver said, his voice filled with determination. Teddy nodded in agreement, his button eyes scanning the war-torn landscape for any sign of escape. But before they could formulate a plan, they were intercepted by a group of resistance fighters who emerged from the shadows, their faces grim with determination. Quickly, come with us, one of the resistance fighters urged, gesturing towards a nearby alleyway. With no time to spare, Oliver and Teddy followed the resistance fighters through the labyrinthine streets, ducking and weaving through the chaos of war as they made their daring escape. As they emerged from the war-torn city, Oliver and Teddy breathed a sigh of relief, their hearts filled with gratitude for the bravery and sacrifice of those who had risked their lives to save them. As they ventured onward through the corridors of time, Oliver knew that he would never forget the lessons he had learned amidst the devastation of World War II, the importance of courage, resilience, and the enduring spirit of hope in the face of adversity. And as they journeyed towards their next destination, he knew that their adventure was far from over, with countless wonders and discoveries still awaiting them in the vast expanse of time. Chapter 13, The Search for the Time-Traveling Mechanism After their tumultuous encounter with the chaos of World War II, Oliver and Teddy found themselves standing on the threshold of another adventure. Their hearts filled with determination and curiosity. As they gazed out into the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex, they knew that their journey through the corridors of time was far from over. With a sense of anticipation tinged with excitement, Oliver and Teddy stepped forward into the swirling mist, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. When the mist cleared, they found themselves standing in a vast, cavernous chamber, a place of ancient secrets and hidden mysteries. Oliver's eyes widened in astonishment as he took in the sight before him. The chamber was filled with towering columns and intricate carvings, their surfaces adorned with symbols and glyphs that seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy. Where are we, Teddy? Oliver asked, his voice filled with wonder. Teddy glanced around, his button eyes gleaming with excitement. It appears we've stumbled upon the heart of the time-traveling mechanism, the very source of our adventures, Teddy replied. With Teddy leading the way, Oliver eagerly set off to explore the ancient chamber, hoping to uncover the secrets of the time-traveling vortex and find a way to control their journey through time. But their quest was not without its challenges. The chamber was filled with cunning traps and puzzles that tested their wits and ingenuity at every turn. They dodged swinging blades, deciphered cryptic riddles, and navigated treacherous pitfalls as they ventured deeper into the heart of the chamber. As they delved deeper into the mysteries of the time-traveling mechanism, Oliver's determination grew stronger, fueled by the hope of unlocking the secrets of their extraordinary adventure. With each passing moment, he felt a sense of connection to the ancient forces that pulsed through the very fabric of time itself. But their quest took an unexpected turn when they stumbled upon a hidden chamber concealed behind a crumbling wall. Inside, they discovered a series of ancient artifacts, a collection of intricate devices and mystical relics that seemed to hold the key to controlling the time-traveling vortex. With a sense of awe and trepidation, Oliver reached out and grasped one of the artifacts, a small, intricately carved amulet that pulsed with an otherworldly energy. As he held it aloft, he felt a surge of power course through his veins, as if he were tapping into the very essence of time itself. 
With Teddy's guidance, Oliver activated the ancient artifact, setting into motion a sequence of events that would unlock the secrets of the time-traveling mechanism and pave the way for their next journey through the corridors of time. As they stepped into the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex once again, Oliver and Teddy knew that their adventure was far from over. With the power of the time-traveling mechanism at their fingertips, they were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead and unlock the mysteries of the universe one step at a time. Chapter 14, The Enchanted Forest of Legends As Oliver and Teddy emerged from the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex, they found themselves standing on the edge of a lush and verdant forest, a place of untold beauty and mystery. The air was filled with the sweet scent of wildflowers and the melodious songs of birdsong, and shafts of golden sunlight filtered through the dense canopy overhead. Oliver's eyes widened in wonder as he took in the breathtaking sight before him. Tall trees stretched skyward, their branches intertwined like the fingers of ancient guardians protecting the secrets of the forest. Strange and exotic creatures darted through the underbrush, their colorful plumage and shimmering scales glinting in the dappled sunlight. Teddy, look at this place, Oliver whispered, his voice filled with awe. Teddy nodded in agreement, his button eyes sparkling with excitement. It's like something out of a fairy tale, Oliver, a place of magic and wonder, Teddy replied. With Teddy leading the way, Oliver eagerly set off to explore the enchanted forest, his senses alive with the sights and sounds of nature. They wandered along winding paths and babbling brooks pausing to marvel at the beauty of the woodland glades and hidden groves. But their journey took an unexpected turn when they stumbled upon a clearing deep within the heart of the forest, a place where time seemed to stand still and legends came to life. In the center of the clearing stood a towering ancient oak tree, its gnarled branches reaching towards the sky like the fingers of an ancient sage. Surrounding the tree were stone statues of legendary creatures, mythical beasts and magical beings that had been frozen in time for centuries. Oliver's eyes widened in astonishment as he took in the sight before him. It was like stepping into a world of fantasy and legend, a place where dragons soared through the skies and fairies danced among the flowers. But their sense of wonder quickly turned to alarm when they realized that they were not alone in the enchanted forest. Lurking in the shadows were dark and malevolent forces, creatures of darkness and despair that sought to corrupt the magic of the forest and bend it to their will. With a sense of urgency, Oliver and Teddy rallied the inhabitants of the forest, dragons and fairies, unicorns and centaurs. Together they waged a battle against the forces of darkness, their courage and determination shining like beacons in the darkness. As the final battle raged on, Oliver and Teddy knew that their adventure in the enchanted forest was far from over. With the fate of the forest hanging in the balance, they fought with all their might, determined to protect the magic and wonder of this wondrous place for generations to come. And as the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, illuminating the forest with its golden glow, Oliver and Teddy emerged victorious, their hearts filled with the joy of knowing that they had helped to save a world of magic and wonder from the forces of darkness. Chapter 15, The Final Confrontation after their triumph in the enchanted forest, Oliver and Teddy emerged from the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. With the power of the time-traveling mechanism at their fingertips, they knew that their journey through the corridors of time was far from over. As the mist cleared, they found themselves standing on the threshold of a vast and desolate wasteland, a place of darkness and despair unlike anything they had ever seen before. The sky above was a swirling maelstrom of dark clouds and crackling lightning, and the air was thick with the scent of brimstone and ash. Oliver's heart sank as he surveyed the scene before him. It was like stepping into the heart of a nightmare, a place where darkness reigned supreme and hope seemed like nothing more than a distant memory. Where are we, Teddy? Oliver asked, his voice trembling with fear. Teddy glanced around, his button eyes filled with concern. It appears we've stumbled upon the domain of the Dark Sorcerer, the very source of the darkness that threatens to consume the world, Teddy replied solemnly. Determined to put an end to the Dark Sorcerer's reign of terror once and for all, Oliver and Teddy set off across the desolate wasteland, their hearts filled with courage and determination. But their journey was fraught with peril at every turn. They faced deadly traps and cunning illusions as they navigated the treacherous terrain, their resolve tested to its limits. 
As they drew closer to the Dark Sorcerer's Fortress, they encountered legions of dark creatures, demons and ghouls, specters and shadows, that sought to thwart their progress at every turn. But Oliver and Teddy pressed on, their determination unwavering as they fought their way through the hordes of darkness, their hearts filled with the hope of bringing an end to the dark sorcerer's reign of terror once and for all. At last, they reached the gates of the dark sorcerer's fortress, a towering edifice of blackened stone and twisted spires that loomed ominously against the darkened sky. With a sense of trepidation, Oliver and Teddy crossed the threshold into the heart of the fortress, ready to face the final confrontation with the Dark Sorcerer. As they entered the throne room, they found themselves face to face with the Dark Sorcerer, a figure shrouded in darkness and cloaked in shadow, his eyes burning with malevolent power. But Oliver and Teddy stood their ground, their hearts filled with courage as they prepared to face their greatest challenge yet. With a surge of determination, they unleashed the power of the time-traveling mechanism, channeling its energy into a blinding burst of light that engulfed the Dark Sorcerer and banished the darkness from the land. As the light faded and the darkness receded, Oliver and Teddy emerged victorious, their hearts filled with the joy of knowing that they had saved the world from the brink of destruction. With the power of the time-traveling mechanism at their fingertips, Oliver and Teddy knew that their journey through the corridors of time was far from over. But as they stepped into the swirling mist of the time-traveling vortex once again, they knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together, with courage, determination, and the enduring spirit of friendship. As the final chapter draws to a close, we bid you farewell, dear friends, but know that the stories we've shared will linger in your hearts forever. Until we meet again, may your dreams be filled with the magic of Storytime Haven, and may the pages of your own adventures be filled with joy, wonder, and endless possibility. Good night, and may your next chapter be filled with stories yet untold.